Hey guys, Julie here. I am with Rec, the Malinois, and I've also got my car here with the trunk open. Nearly at his four week mark, and he's just about ready to go off property, which is very exciting because he's come such a long way in his time with us. On drop off day, his car behavior, not good. Barking nonstop, lunging out as soon as the doors open, pulling on the leash everywhere. Her owner even had to stop midway through on the drive here to let him out because he had diarrhea. That is a stressed out, anxious dog. So what we're gonna be doing is changing the association to the car from crazy to calm, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. First thing is we're leveraging everything we've taught him so far. So I'm not just gonna open the door and let him jump right in without permission. Always put your dog in a downstay, take your time to open the door, and then you give them permission to hop on in. Let me show you. What I'm going to do is point to where I want him to go and say the word place. If he needs help, I'll tap the tone. Wreck. Place. Tap the tone. Good. Break. Come. Sit. Wreck. Good boy, nice work. Place, nice. Stay. Okay, now I'm gonna shut the trunk and then I'll show you what I do once I'm inside the car to get him in the downstay. Okay, so we're in the car. As you can see, he's standing straight up. I've also got Jesse with me. What I'm going to do is start the car and then ask him to down. I want him to associate the engine starting with the downstay. So I'm gonna start the car. And then I'm going to ask him. Down. Well, that was pretty easy. But then again, he's had almost four weeks. Now I'll click. Click again. Click again. Good. So I asked him to down. He did it on verbal. Good boy. No. Good. I'm going to walk you through what just happened. He downed no problem. Then he popped right back up. Good. This is great. This is a great session for you guys to see. So then I start clicking. I'm at a level eight. He listens to that, but then he pops back up. It's sort of like a game of whack-a-mole. At that point, I'm not going to give him a down command anymore. I'm simply just gonna click. This is contextual e-collar work because he already knows what I want. Once I give him the verbal command and click, that's it for verbal commands in the car. Everything after that is just gonna be contextual work. Why? Because he's so smart. He's gonna understand that when he feels an e-collar click in the car, it's obviously not going to mean recall. It's not gonna mean heel. It's not gonna mean place and it's not gonna mean sit. The only thing for him to do is lay down. So now I'm gonna click. This is pretty typical for the first car ride, especially with a dog who's used to being crazy in the car. So we are changing the association and by enforcing the non-negotiable downstay, he's going to learn to be calm in the car. So we're driving and you can't see wreck, which is a good thing because I know he's in a downstay. So remember, this is a dog who's used to pacing, barking, looking out the window, and now he's being asked to calm down and relax in his downstay. We're coming up on a stop sign here. This is a big trigger for dogs to pop up. If he pops up, I'm simply gonna click the button and he's gonna go back down. Click. And he's back down. So it's kind of like a game of whack-a-mole. And you're just gonna do this with every car ride until he gets in, he lays down, and he doesn't get up until you get to your destination and he's invited out. Why is this so important with a dog like Rec? Why can't you just put him in and let him be a dog and let him look out the window? Well, his behavior when you let him do that really sucked. Barking, pacing, diarrhea, whining, rushing out when the doors open, 
So we're gonna take back control. We're gonna add some structure, some discipline, some boundaries, some obedience ask for the downstay, it's gonna solve so many issues. There's not gonna be any more car sickness. He can't bark because he's not gonna be looking out the windows and he's not gonna be pacing around, which takes away the stress. So, not bad for his first car ride. The only thing now is to just start practicing it every day. So every field trip from now on, um, We'll be enforcing the downstay in the car, and that just gives us a one-up when we get to our destination. He's already gonna be a little bit in a more relaxed mindset. So you're seeing the work as it's being done. There's no magic to this stuff. It's literally just building on the foundation that we've taught him in the prior month and applying it to the car. So a lot of dogs, even though they know the down and they've done the down a million times with proofing, they will not down in the car because they're so used to being crazy in the car so it gives us a really good session and a good opportunity to say, yes, down applies even in the car. Coming up on another stop sign here. Again, this is another trigger. When the car comes to a stop, the dogs tend to want to pop up impulsively and look out the window and see where they're at and probably bark if they see people. So here we are at the stop sign. He's a very smart dog. He doesn't make the same mistakes over and over and over again. So I'm not surprised that he didn't pop up just there. That's one thing he's got going for him and his owner's got um, in his favor is that he is very smart. Once you correct him for something, he typically doesn't repeat it too many more times. All right, guys, I'm going to hang up this for now. Just wanted to show you part of our car session with Rex. Hey, guys, we just parked the car. We're at a local gas station. I don't know if you can see around you. There's people. There's people pumping gas all around us. And we've got our boy, Rex, um, my only job as I'm sounding like a broken record, is to keep him in that down. Keep him physically there, the mind will follow, and your car rides are gonna be a lot less stressful. So I'm gonna turn off the car and I'm actually gonna get out and pump gas. Um, I'm really happy he didn't pop up at all and there's people around us, so I know before training this would have triggered an eruption of barking out the window. Um, so again, while I'm pumping the gas, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on him because this is a training session. And if he pops up, even though I'm outside the car and he's inside the car, I can click because again, contextually it makes sense and he's gonna know what to do with the pressure and go back down. Say hi, Jesse. Say hi. Yes. Hey guys, I'm here pumping my gas and I've got wreck in the back seat of the car. There's people and cars all around us. This is a very exciting atmosphere and it's the same scenario that on drop off day when his owner parked the car and got out he was barking non-stop and i don't hear any barking do you in fact if i could show you it's kind of hard to see he's in a downstay All right we just got gas got my dog in the back without making a peep and now it's time to drive home and i'll show you how we do it at home once we open the door he's not allowed to just rush out he's got to wait for permission um, every moment we leverage for training. So I'm really proud of him. This is his first of many, 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 many car rides. And from here on out, it just gets easier. Just got home, just parked the car. I'm about to open the trunk and I want you guys to see the very first rep. In case he makes a mistake, if he runs out of the car, I'm simply going to correct and then I'm gonna recall him back, put him back in, close the trunk and then reopen it. This is gonna teach him only come out after I invite you. Wow, he's impressed me. See, I told you he was a smart dog. <clears throat> so I'm gonna praise this. Good, good boy, good boy. Break, and that's it.